calcium where it's not supposed to be, and it will. It, it's one of the few vitamins that has been shown, to, or nutrients that have been shown to uh, reverse uh, hardening of the arteries. Right? It will slowly, over time, pull the calcium that's stuck to your arterial wall out, and, and then it will allow you to excrete it. And then the stuff you need, it will put into your bones. Right? So you really want K2. There's a lot of studies out there. Nowadays, supplement manufacturers are getting smarter, and they now sell them together, which is great. They didn't for a long time, but they're starting to get smarter. And so you're going to start seeing D3 slash K2. That's what you want. You want D3 K2. And then if you want to really go be super awesome, then eventually I'm going to talk to you about A, because really the three of them go together. It's like a three-way teeter-totter, and they all have to be balanced. So if you're going to be supplementing with high-dose D3 and K2 in the right ratio, then you need to be taking A as well, because that is... The D3 and the K2 will eventually, it's really the D3, will block your ability to absorb vitamin A, which is going to lead to macular degeneration and all kinds of eye issues because you need A and it's also will lower your immune system. So you really want, when you supplement, you know, um, with high dose of anything, over time it can cause an imbalance elsewhere. So you have to be cognizant of all the, what you're imbalancing, right? So like for me, I take, um, I take a supplement that, because like D3 is awesome. Uh, I take this one right here, but I'm not, you know, saying that you have to take this one. But this one's great because it's called ADK, right? And it has D3, K2, and A in exactly the right ratios. So now I don't have to worry about getting, I don't have to have three bottles and make sure, oh, i got to take one of that one and two of this one. And, you know, like, this is just, this, this was all done for me. I got one like that. Yeah, this is, this is the one that I like and I recommend because it's just easier, you know? Okay, so that's what I have to say about that one. And it will help your lungs and uh, respiratory system stay really healthy. And, and then there's breathing exercises that we can go into. We're, we're a little over already. Okay, so we already talked about this. Use a HEPA filter at night. Um, make sure your home doesn't have mold. Keep your sinus cavities clean. That's huge for lung health. That's really good for lung health. And um, you can also do breathing exercises. That's a whole other thing. If you feel like you uh, have, like, maybe you're prone to bronchitis and you, you get bronchitis, Kitis once a year or twice a year, as a lot of people do, and they can feel it deep in their lungs. Um, I highly recommend you use um, a device like this, which is called, um, this one's called Air Physio, right here, and then this one has a different name, but they're basically the same type of device. They're this little plastic thing with a metal ball, right, right, and you blow into it, and it, the ball will start to vibrate, and it causes a back pressure into your lung, and it will make any... Um, mucus and um, bacteria that has stuck to the inside of your alveolar all of the lung cavity, it will break it loose so you can get rid of it. Because the problem with like any respiratory infection is that the bacteria find and viruses and pathogens find their way into your lungs real deep into the costophrenic recesses and they don't like to get loose. And really the only way to get it loose is to exercise vigorously, like breathe really deep but we don't breathe, we don't use our full vital capacity with every breath, okay? And so if you're, if you have bronchitis, it's really not easy to breathe that deeply, right? Because you'll start coughing, <laughs> and it hurts, right? And so, and then also another thing that helps jumping, like doing jumping helps a lot. That'll dislodge the bacteria, but if you're, have, you know, if you're sick, you have COPD, and you're hurting, doing a bunch of jump roping, you know, is just not something you're going to do. So this can cause a similar effect it will cause the back pressure to dislodge the stuck mucus, okay? So it works really well, especially for people who can't do a lot of exercise. It will help the health of your lungs a lot. And it's no drugs, it's nothing. It's just air using a vibratory air back pressure to dislodge. It takes practice using it. You've got to practice, but even elderly people can, can do it. Another thing that I highly recommend is, like, let's say you feel like you have a... Um, you know, you have it in your lungs, whatever the it is, and, you know, you feel it deep in your lungs, you need to get it out. If you can lay on an incline, so like on a table, but you put a whole bunch of pillows, or a couch, you put a bunch of pillows, and try to make yourself incline a little bit, breathe steam for five to ten minutes to loosen up the mucus so it's not super hard, and then have someone use something like this, you know, this is, was really an expensive one, um, that I lend out to people, and you put the little, the head on it, there's all these different heads that you can put on it, and here, I'll turn it off first, but um, percussion has been shown to be very, very effective at dislodging the mucus in the lungs, so there's a lot of videos on it, and so if you're laying, 
the person who has it in their lungs is laying on their face down, when you do this on their, an, on their posterior lung fields, so like right here, you'll dislodge also the mucus and they'll be able to cough it out, right? Which is awesome because then they can heal and recover much quicker from any respiratory condition. So this is a common procedure used for COPD and other things, um, other kinds of lung conditions, if they have mucus in the lungs that needs to get out. And um, so yeah, steam inhaler to loosen the mucus, and then a, a percussive yeah. device. And you can actually, like, I'm also a licensed massage therapist, because in the state of Tennessee, I wanted to be able to touch people legally, so I've got my massage therapy license, even though I'm a doctor in other states, in this state I'm not, so I, that's how I got around that. But you can do this, right, on the person's back, right? It's like a percussive, it's called the potement. And um, that will also, so if you don't have one of those, just go like that real quick, you know? And that motion will dislodge the mucus and help them cough it out, and then they can breathe the steam and, um, and help their lungs heal. Okay, so I think we're about done. Uh, like, actually, we have one left, but we're gone over, so I'm gonna just go through it really quick. Hold on, where are we? Uh, how do I risk? Oh, bone breaks and accidental falls. That was a, another, I have had a whole lecture on this, so I'm not gonna go through this a whole lot. Um, but there's really three things that cause people to increase their risk of falling and having a bone break. And it's lack of proprioception, which is their ability to, to know where your body is in space. Does that make sense? So um, you can practice proprioception exercises. It's like balancing, you know? And I, like I said, I have a whole other lecture that's just on this topic. And then sarcopenia, which is uh, muscle wasting, right? That happens to all of us as we get older. So you wanna do anything you can to keep your lean muscle mass. And um, the, one of those astaxanthin works great, glycine is great, you know, because it'll help you keep your, but you still have to exercise. You can't just sit there doing nothing and then have it work, right? You gotta, but these are, th there's a whole bunch of, you, but keeping your muscle mass is extremely important. And they've actually done studies that have correlated, associated the lean muscle mass on your thighs with longevity. So, the, so you want to keep your thigh, and, and, and then I've tried to speculate why that is, because correlation is not causation and all that kind of thing, but you know, if you're going to fall, like let's say my ankle rolled out and I'm going to catch myself, I'm going to catch myself with my thigh on this other side, right? Mm -hmm. So all the hamstrings and thigh muscles are what you would catch yourself when you fall. And if they're not strong enough, like if you can't, one of the best things we do at the clinic, and I'll demonstrate it, and it's testing uh, uh, several different things all at once, and I'll just show you, is we call it I think the sit down stand up test, there's a name for it, I can't remember. But basically, you just do this, okay? <clears throat> like this. Like that. And then you stand back up again. That's it. And you say, do that. Okay? And so, what happens is, if it takes proprioception to be able to balance yourself as you're going down, it takes thigh muscles and balance as you go down, ankle strength, right, to be able to adjust yourself. Don't go like that. Most people will go like that, right? So you, we take off one point if they do that, right? <laughs> Some people will go like this, but they'll go like this, and they'll push, mm -hmm. right? That means you don't have enough strength, right? So, you know, all of us should be, our goal should be able to, do you just do this right here? Just go down, and then come back up, right? Like that. <laughs> and that's been correlated, that test, with longevity as well. Because it's proprioception, muscle strength, and bone strength, right? So, so osteoporosis, sar sarcopenia, and proprioception, those are the three main things that if you can prevent osteoporosis, prevent sarcopenia, muscle wasting, and keep your balance good by doing periodic balance exercises, you will um, prevent your risk of falls dramatically. And bricks as well. And then we talked at the other lecture about using a whole body vibration machine. How many of you guys have or know of those? You've heard of it from me. I've heard it from you. Yeah. yeah. So highly recommend it if you do have a bone break where you have osteoporosis or osteopenia. Doing, using a whole body vibration machine simulates jumping. It simulates um, acceleration at the bone level, at the osteoclasts and the osteoblasts, which are the bone builders and the bone chewers. And so you have all the serum calcium and the K2 is the chaperone, and the chaperone wants to put the, put the, bone, the calcium somewhere. Well, what tells the K2 to put it inside the porosities of your bone? It's acceleration. That's what it does. This tells the osteoclast to take that, that and, you know, the bone builders to take the calcium that's in your blood and put it in the porosity. You have to jump. So, well, most of us don't jump rope. <laughs> Not anymore, anyway, right? Yeah. So how do you jump? How do you simulate jumping so that way the osteoblasts know to put the calcium where it's supposed to go and not in a, where it shouldn't be? Well, um, whole body vibration plates on a microscopic level, 
the bone sees the vibration as jumping. So all you have to do is do little knee bends like this on, on the vibration plate for 10 minutes a day, and your bone density will go way up. And it will heal any ligaments and joint problems. Whole body vibration plates are like amazing for joint issues, for knee pain, for any kind of sciatic pain, sciatica. I mean, all kinds of pain, like joint musculoskeletal pain, it will heal. Right? So there's a reason why when astronauts go up in space, they instantly get osteoporosis, all of them. Because there's no gravity on their bones. And so our bones are very dynamic tissue. They change immediately according to a different changing environment, right? And so if you don't have any gravity, there's no acceleration, the bones immediately start chewing it up. All osteoclasts start chewing up all the bone and making your porosities bigger and bigger, right? So how do they prevent osteoporosis in astronauts? They put them on a whole body vibration plate. They got a whole body vibration plate, it's a plate that vibrates, and then they have a band that holds them down, and then they do squats like this, and they just do bends on it, right? And so that's why we know whole body vibration works, is because of NASA. And um, anyway, it works fantastic. I've had super good results with people with all kinds of problems, just all kinds of problems. Um, frozen shoulder, IT band syndrome, all kinds of stuff. You know, it just works really well. But just playing for it to prevent, to increase your bone density, whole body vibration is great. Okay, so that's that. Um, yeah, make sure you don't have any loose rugs or anything like that. That's a big one. It's like you have a rug and you're shuffling to the bathroom in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and then you fall off from the rug. So definitely I recommend having no loose rugs, at least between your bed and the bathroom. <laughs> and um, okay, let's see here. Now we're almost done. And this is urinary issues. So urinary tract issues, a lot of people as we get older have urinary tract issues and that can lead to all kinds of cascading problems. So um, making sure that you're able to go to the bathroom is good, especially for men. They, they don't um, void their bladders completely because it's almost impossible as, as men get older for them to void their bladders, but that, that uh, urine that stays in the bladder acts as a uh, little petri dish to, for uh, bacteria to grow. <laughs> and so then their chances of urinary tract infections go way up and then uh, it travels up the ureter, right, and goes into the kidney and then can cause um, nephrolithiasis and all kinds of you know, kidney issues. So it's just super important to address it if it's an issue. You need to be able to, to go to the bathroom. Um, glycine also will help with, with that, believe it or not, and um, with men especially for urinary tract infections. And another thing is mannose, D-mannose powder is super, super effective um, as a regular thing if you have chronic urinary tract infections, which happens a lot with men later, so they're just always having urinary tract infection, so D-mannose would be something that you should just take regularly because it works really well as a non-adherent. The bacteria does not want to stack, stack, stick to the uh, bladder walls. It will just release and then you can get rid of it easier and flush it out. And, um, and so those are some big ones. There's one other real big one that I'm forgetting right now. Oh, uh, they have done DNA analysis of the bacteria that are in urinary tract infections for elderly. And almost all the bacteria they have found, uh, and they actually, I can't believe they sequenced the DNA, is from uh, non-organic poultry. So that, if that's not a, a, so I guess what I'm saying is, let's say I had an elder person I was taking care of, you know, um, and, and this person had chronic UTIs, and just we could not get them to not have UTIs all the time, I would have them not eat um, anything but organic poultry because it has been sequenced the DNA directly to be from that. So um, I don't know if it would help or not. It's supposed to, it should. I, I, there's been no studies to show whether or not if you change to organic, does the urinary tract infections go away? All I can say is that the DNA was sequenced and it's from Norman Camp. And they even found the farm to one of the farms for this, and that was a farm in Texas. But So the point is the non-organic meats do seem to contribute a lot to the bacteria that we find in our bodies. So, um, there you go, and sometimes, for many people, um, if you, you need to be able to have regular bowel movements, uh, I'll ask people, you know, do you have regular bowel movements? And, oh yes, I have, you know, one every other week. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not the regularity I'm talking about. So, you really want to be able to have, have a bowel movement once a day, at least. Twice is better, once for sure, and that's what you, that should be your goal, and um, one way to make it easier to have a bowel movement is to use these things that are called squatty potties and they put your 
sphincter in the right direction to help you relax, so it can make it a lot easier to go to the bathroom. I mean, it makes some people say it's just a miracle. Like, <laughs> so if you have that issue, I highly recommend them. You can these ones are foldable, and you can tuck them away, so they're not like right there. Other ones people just keep right here, but they're more there if you have visitors coming. But um, some people travel with these because they work so well. But it definitely makes a difference in how easy it is to have a bowel movement. And then, let's see, we talked about Divanos already, and some berry, blueberries are great. See, and that's it. I think I'm, gonna, I'm sorry I went over everyone. So, does anybody have any questions right now? If, if you're welcome to leave, if you need to leave, go for it. No, we're down for it. All right, go for it. Questions? I get my glycine from Amazon. It's an amino acid. You can get it in big envelopes, you know. And Nucleopasta sells it in big containers too, and uh, that's where I get it. Okay. It's really inexpensive because it's, it's just food. It's just a amino acid. <laughs> so it's easy. And xylitol, same thing. You can just get it in a big, but this is a sugar alcohol. It's not an amino acid. And don't eat it. It's just for putting in no spray, putting in, you know, <laughs> in your mouth, swish around, like that kind of thing. Anyway, sorry, we interrupted your question. Assuming somebody let's say, hypothetically, went to bed regularly between 12 and 1, okay. and got up again regularly between 7 and 8. Okay. Are they just hosed as far as deep sleep goes? So, I would say, uh, from all of the studies that I have read, and I'm a big, I love researching things to death, you know, mm -hmm. so I got my MPH, so I learned how to read studies. <laughs> Most people mm -hmm. would be mostly hosed. <laughs> so um, now, but you could be different. It's the same way with like the blood glucometer, right? You, you know, everyone's different, right? You, you have to see what works for you. So like for me, I had to get this ring, and this is what saved me. Like it, this is what taught me what I'm doing that's working against me for sleep. And you might be one of those people, like the screen capture, you know, that where you you do get deep sleep. Like you can go to sleep later, and then you can you can get deep sleep, right? The only way you're going to know is if you try to measure it, right? Is there, is there a, an easy sign or symptom or something that you no. can say, oh, this, I'm not getting that deep sleep? No. I, I, you know, I try to, because sometimes I'm like, oh man, I got some good sleep last night, I feel great. And I'll take the ring and yeah. I just connect this to my phone and I'm like, dang, you know, 18 <laughs> minutes, why do I feel so good, you know? And it'll be the reverse, I'm like, man, I feel horrible, I probably got no deep sleep last night. Yeah. And then I look and it's like, you know, one hour and 23 minutes, and that should be, I should feel yeah. like a king, you know, a queen, or whatever. Yeah. And um, so I can't feel it, but I'm naturally hyperactive. <laughs> I, I'm a little on the high strong side. Yeah, and so, um, you know, who knows what, why. I, I can't figure it out. Um, one more, another hypothetical question. Go for it. Assuming somebody has always had horrible teeth, and probably has more root canals and cavity and every tooth they have. And seems to have chronic <coughs> infections, and is worried about the heart. You know, but has chronic infection they know about, but the dentist you know, they put them off, that kind of thing. Is there anything you can do to fix the chronic abscess besides dental work, or take no. amoxicillin all the time? No, no. So um, I, I do know one person. You know, was a good friend of mine who couldn't afford dental work and. Mm -hmm. Um, she had an abscess, and so she used a water pick with hydrogen peroxide like two or three times a day, like religiously. Like after every time she ate anything, she would water pick with hydrogen peroxide. Mm -hmm. And then she used um, this stuff right here, which I would recommend for you. And you can come take a look in a second. Hold on. It's, it's a ozonated oil called Tooth and Gum Support with Peppermint. And so it's uh -huh. ozonated oil. So it's like you're putting ozone on the tooth. It, Mm -hmm. It has a weird ozone smell to it, but it will help control the infection. But there's no way you can get deep enough right. down yeah. into where the root of the tooth is. So, like, honestly, if you have, um, if you were my dad or somebody, which my dad's right there, yeah. I would tell you, get your root canals removed, all of them. And have I said that, Dad? Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. <laughs> like, save your money, get your root canals removed. Every single root. So the way, if you read this book, I highly recommend you get this book and read it. Just get it and read it. It's worth it. Uh -huh. um, basically, and, and I'm a member of, of an organization called the IAOMT, the International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology. Okay. And they are a bunch of 
uh, what I would call um, naturopathic d dentists, right? They call them biological dentists, right? Okay. But they're like the naturopaths of the dental world. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I love them. They're awesome because I believe as a naturopath, dental health is like one of the keys to everything, all your health. It affects everything in your whole body. Wow. So I'm like, I got to be associated okay. with dentists, you know, because yeah. this, this is how important it is. And they, so we get along great, so I go to their conferences. And um, they, they, the way they taught me at this, these big conferences is like, if you had a dead finger or a dead toe, would you keep it on? Would you just try to control the infection and keep it on your foot, right? No, that would be ridiculous. The game, you cut it off if you have diabetes and you've got to cut the toe off. It's the only way to control the infection. Otherwise, it's going to keep growing and spreading and like it's bad. You've got to get the dead tissue off. Your tooth is a live tissue. It's not like other bone. It's a, it's a live tissue. Why would you keep a dead finger in your mouth? So, so assume you've had a tooth with abscess and you've got a root canal done and you've got a, a crown on there on yeah. top of it. You, you can forget about that forever now. Yeah. You can't forget about it forever, can you? You're asking me. I yeah. you remember who you're talking about. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and so, like, please go do your own research. Like, that's one thing. I don't ever believe anything yeah. I say. Go down the rabbit hole and figure out what you believe. But, you know, I went down the rabbit hole. I went and talked to this guy three times at three different conferences. I wanted to talk to him personally, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, like, I, you know, this guy right here, you know, I went and talked to him, right? Sure. This is the guy who talks about how cholesterol, and this is the doctor who said sleep apnea and tooth abscesses, too, which is a different doctor than this guy, right? You know, I, I went and I go find these guys to talk to him. You know? okay. And you know, but so I really dive deep into the rabbit hole. So I made my own opinion, but if you go to any regular dentist, they're going to say, I'm, I'm, a quack, like I'm full of hogwash, right? But if you go to the International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology, which I can send you if you put a little star by your name and say send me the, dent the dental organization, they have whole papers they've written by dentists that say what I'm telling you. Like they literally say, this is, this is what we, this is our stance on fluoride. They're very against fluoride, well, even topical application. And this is dentists, and they're against it, right? And, um, and they, have, they tell why. 12 pages of references, just the references. Right, of why they say it. Um, they, they're very against mercury amalgams. They have a video they show called the smoking gun where they take a tooth that has a, a mercury filling uh -huh. and they take a toothbrush and then they have this green screen that they put in front that's translucent, you know, opaque, but, um, and, but it's very sensitive to mercury. And what they do is they take the toothbrush and they dip it in water and then they just scrub the top of the tooth, right? You know, that has the filling. And then what you see through the other side of the screen is the mercury vapor. And it looks like this to the tooth is smoking. Right? That's what happens. That's how much mercury exposure you're getting every time you brush your tooth that has a mercury filling in it. Right? Wow. You're, you're filling your whole yeah. body with toxins. And you can see it. You, it's, it's, you can Google it. Just type in smoking, smoking tooth uh, video and you'll see it. Right? But the American, this International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology, they, their big things are mercury fillings, how to remove them safely without poisoning the patient and poisoning the doctor. They have a whole protocol to train dentists on how to do it because it's so poisonous, mm -hmm. right? For the dentist and for the patient, and um, you don't want to just go to any dentist to have it removed. And then, and then they talk about fluoride and how it absorbed even topical fluoride. So I had one person at the, my, one of my lectures ask, I don't know if you remember her. She said, "Well, what do you think about fluoride? You know, it it, it you know it does uh, change your bone structure and make your bones stronger, your teeth, the enamel on your teeth stronger." You know, so that's good, right? And I said, absolutely. It will uh, change the bone structure on the surface of your enamel teeth and make it four to seven times stronger, right? But that has not been correlated or associated with a decrease in cavities whatsoever. So why do you want to increase the strength of the enamel of your teeth if it actually doesn't decrease cavities, right? <laughs> so, I mean, you make your own decision, but that's what the International Academy of oral medicine and toxicology talk about. They have this huge paper on fluoride giving you all the references for all this, right? Because I'm like, okay, you tell me this, I want to read it, right? So I go and read all the studies. You know? And um, so root canals is a big one there. Like, you got to have them removed, you know? All root canals should be removed because it's just a steady drip of poison into your blood and it ultimately is going to damage your heart, is what it does. Or your vasculature. So it may not be, a, you know, you may not have a coronary event, maybe you have a stroke instead because it's going to cause your blood vessels to be sticky, and so any of that serum calcium from the vitamin D3 you're taking without the K2 is going to stick right to those inflamed walls, right? So, 
you know, it's everything's just all you know, related. Everything's overlapping, you know, everything you do. So, but sleep, yeah. So my opinion, you know, if you were somebody I loved, I would say save your money. It's one of, if, if, you know, you'll feel better, you're going to live longer, you know, it could add who knows how many years to your life. But go to the IAOMT's website and read. Read about what they say about root canals, you know. That's my that's my opinion. <laughs> oh, so my friend, oh, give me the one who had, so she was trying to manage it. So yeah, she used this. She used a water pick with hydrogen peroxide. She brushed with activated charcoal once a week or so, okay? Which I recommend because it will pull toxins. It's like it sticks to any bacteria in your gums and just pulls it out, right? But it is abrasive to your teeth a little bit. But let me tell you, you want white teeth. Brushing once a week with activated charcoal will whiten your teeth like that. But I don't recommend doing it every day because it um, will be, it's abrasive over time, right? So once a week is plenty, That's that will be fine. Um, and it will pull any toxins out of your gum line. So I had my sister using this, you know, when she had her antibiotics and her gums, right? She, she had to use this. And it works, but it makes a huge mess, by the way. Like the charcoal's everywhere. You have like, no idea how much, you know, when you spit in the sink, it gets everywhere. You will know it's black. And um, but then after I use this, I would use a pH balancing toothpaste like this one. So this is what I do. Once a week I use this. And then I brush a second time with basically a baking soda based toothpaste because it balances the pH and gets my mouth healthy and, and you know, pulls any of the black that's stuck in the gum line out so I don't have black teeth anymore because you'll look black. Yeah. So how did it help your friend? Oh, yes, yeah, so my friend, she, so she did this whole protocol, and she did it for like two years. But over those two years, um, I was in medical school and I would come visit her. She'd be walking, we don't know on her walks, she was getting worse and worse walking up the hills, like short of breath, you know, right? And she'd have to slow down, I can't walk up that hill that fast. And so it was noticeable to me, right? And, you know, the first thing I think of when I think of heart health is sleep apnea and heart, and hidden dental abscesses. And this one wasn't hidden, she knew she had it. She just didn't want to pay to have it fixed or whatever, right? And they said, oh, no, it's fine, it's fine. But her gum was receding around that tooth. It was a root canal tooth and whatever. And so she knew something was not right. Um, and so she just was trying to manage it. And I said, well, finally, I convinced her. I got out all the, I, I took a special course from the IOMT, and I, and I made her listen to the lecture, right? <laughs> you know, I'm like, get this fixed, right? So she finally did, and she got it removed. And uh, the root canal, and then um, it was had to heal all this, you know, from the pocket, and so that got infected, and I had to help her with that. But finally, it healed, and uh, she told me, she said, Deb, um, within one month of getting that thing taken out, I feel like I can, I can practically run up the hills that I was having short. She's like, my shortness of breath completely went away. Hmm. She said she wouldn't have believed it. She's like, now who knows? This is not a double blind. <laughs> You know, study, but um, you know, but for her, the only thing that changed was she had the root canal tooth removed, a tooth that she knew was infected. Yeah. Right now, what the IAOT tells you is there's no way that a root canal tooth can cannot be infected, and the reason why is because there's dentules, is these little porosities. The way the tooth is designed, it goes outward like this, and so even if they dug all the way in mm -hmm. and, and fill the root, you still have the bacteria that's porous through the tooth, through the dentals, or dentules, or I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it wrong. And, um, and so there's just no way to get it all out. Like there's no way to, to kill and fill all of it. And they also said, it, they show you the tooth, what a dental uh, root canal looks like. Sometimes there's two roots, or, you know, and they have to drill both of them out. But that, nobody looks like that. Like everyone's tooth has little, little, little ones that come off roots, right? And so they don't fill every one of them. It's impossible to drill all those. And so they're only filling the big pockets, right? So there's still the small ones that are infected that um, drip right into your bloodstream, you know? So anyway, so can you manage it? Yes, she was managing it. Was it as effective as removing it? No, I think that removing it, I'm convinced, probably add, added years on her life. You know, she's 65, and now she said you know, she has way more physical endurance than she had before. Um, who knows? All right, any other questions? And anybody can leave, because we're way over, so like, you know. Just keep going. Just keep going, yeah, I can talk forever about all this. So, you know, I think that um, I uh, am going to start trying to record all my videos, all my lectures, and putting them, so if you miss one, because I have ones on indoor air quality, I have ones on, you know, heart health, I, I just have a lot that I go really into depth on this stuff. This was just super high level. And, um, and I show all the published studies, usually, in those other lectures. 
so you can like click on the links and you know um, and I'm going to be putting them on my YouTube channel. I haven't got any of them on there yet. <laughs> this will be the first one, and that way people can watch them again and again if you forget, you know. Do you ever do any on Auto Meme? I haven't, but I'd love to because that's something that I would. I, it's one of my specialties as well. So, but so I'll put it on my list, and then uh, and we'll see how it goes. What I found though, like here, I've only done five lectures, and now they wanted me to repeat one of them already, and uh, and so I'm not getting very far. And <laughs> I'd love to come twice a month, right, and give a lecture. I'd love to do that, because I just love speaking and sharing what I know. And, um, but I think that the schedule gets too full here. I will, and hopefully, at, um, in Norris, I will be doing another lecture series with different topics um, at the First Baptist Church. Norris, Nor Norris Baptist. Norris First Baptist Church. We're just, I put together the whole plan for six lectures, and we're just trying to figure out the dates. But what I'll do is I'll post the brochure here, so you guys can see it. And, I, and if you put your email on the list, I'll email you the list, so that way if there are any of them that look interesting to you, you can come, you're welcome to come, or you just watch them online, because I'm hoping I can figure out how to video them, and then you can just watch them on, on you know, so if you miss it. And that's it. Thank you all.